Imagine a devastating accident changing your life in an instant and sending you down a path you never expected. A Danville family knows firsthand what that's like after their 18-year-old son, Jake, suffered a broken neck on the eve of his high school graduation. Now, for the first time, the Javiers are speaking publicly about their heartbreaking ordeal, the incredible challenges, and the overwhelming show of support that is helping them move forward. From the field to the weight room, Jake Javier is used to spending a lot of time working out. But now, instead of building his body for football, the former San Ramon Valley High School team captain is relearning how to move his body after breaking his neck in a diving accident at a swim party on the last day of school. And every day it gets easier, every day I get more energy. I'm able to stay up in the chair longer because that's one of the most energy draining things is sitting upright. So you're doing more in the gym today. Dr. James Crew oversees the rehabilitation program at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. In Jake's case, he has paralysis of his hands, uh, partial paralysis of his upper arms, and full paralysis of his lower body, including paralysis of several organ systems, including the lungs, uh, the bowel, and the bladder. I'm just going to repeat a couple. More than four weeks have passed since the star football player was airlifted to John Muir on the eve of his high school graduation. Jake sustained a... This x-ray shows the severity of the injury. The C5 and C6 space was injured. He had a, what we call a subluxation where the spine shifts due to severe damage to the ligaments. Jake's mother says she arrived at the hospital frantic, not knowing what to expect. But just before he was wheeled into surgery, she got a chance to talk to her son. And when he saw me, he started to cry. And he said, Mom, I messed up. I messed up so bad. And I said, what do you mean, son? And he said, I promised you I'd never make you cry. And I'm making you cry now. Um, do you think he is fully, like, accepting of the fact now that he will never walk again? You know, Julie, I really believe he accepted that, that day on the gurney. I really do. Doctors realigned Jake's spine using two metal rods and eight screws. They say that relieved the pressure on his badly damaged spinal cord. But a new battle was just beginning. Um, I got pneumonia and my lungs collapsed. And so for a while I was on a ventilator helping me breathe. I couldn't breathe on my own. And it was just really difficult all the time. It was really, really drew a lot of energy out of me just trying to focus on my breathing. Fresh air. Yep. The same focus, internal drive, and determination that helped Jake succeed on the football field is now helping him fight the infections that invade his body. He's now off the feeding tube, breathing on his own, and moving around in his electric wheelchair for several hours a day. Oh. How's that feel? It's nice. I have to do a weight shift every once in a while, get the pressure off my lower back. How often do you need to do it? Every hour. For how long? At least a minute. Good answer. And in the past couple of weeks, Jake has started to show improvement in his upper body strength, gaining some movement in different parts of his arms. The important one that I have back is the wrists, because that's how I'm able to grab things. So moving forward, I'm going to have to learn how to live my life just flexing my wrists and it brings my finger and thumb together. He hasn't cried since. He hasn't complained since. He hasn't said, why me? He hasn't acted sad. He's, he's just been very stoic and um, focused, like the athlete that he is, absolutely focused on what needs to be done next. Some of the best advice I've gotten is you have good days and you have bad days. 
and you just got to take it as it is and just move forward. The Javiers know Jake has a long road ahead, but they say the overwhelming show of support from family, friends, the community, and even people who have never met Jake has been incredibly uplifting. And the surprise visits from people such as former 49er great Ronnie Lott, Raiders quarterback Derek Carr and Raiders running back Roy Hilo Jr. have meant the world to Jake, along with a very special visit from Cal Poly football coach Jim Kraft. Kraft recruited Jake, and Jake was excited to begin playing football for him this fall. It's kind of crazy. I mean, the number of people that have been coming up to people that I know and asking about me, and I mean, I just I went through my phone earlier and getting texts from people I don't know and looking on social media and stuff and all the support, it's, it's pretty crazy. How does that make you feel? Does that, I mean, because I know it's frustrating and what you're going through is so hard, and does that help you? Yeah, definitely helps. Knowing that other people are looking out for me and praying for me, it's really nice. And Jake says he's grateful to his family, especially his mom and dad, who are constantly at his side. Because it makes a huge difference having someone in the room with me and just always there to help out if I need anything. They've been amazing to me the whole time, always eager to help me with anything I need. So I'm just very thankful for my parents and family. What an incredible young man. And to hear his mom say, hasn't said why me, hasn't complained. And tomorrow night you've got part two and, and you're going to show us the operation that he had and actually if this operation is successful it's a cutting edge operation he might get the use back of his hands he might it's a very innovative uh, procedure he qualified to undergo this experimental stem cell procedure that's giving him and his family new hope and coming up tomorrow night on the 10 o'clock news in part two we talk to the doctors who are leading this cutting edge clinical study and the hope that it could improve Jake's recovery cannot be understated how, what a game changer this would be if it works, and that's the big if.